friends hello again uh, I'm gonna uh, answer some questions uh, a lot of questions online about the lecture on power laws and thank you for these interesting questions so let me start but I'm gonna structure it uh, to make it flow with the previous uh, the, the main uh, power law lesson okay so first question was um, what about wars? <laughs> okay, uh, Steven Pinker wrote a book. Um, the journalist Steven Pinker wrote a book on um, saying that violence has declined. Naively, he took a hundred observations uh, over the past history and uh, claimed that you know we haven't had wars since big wars since the Second World War, uh, so the world is a better place. There were like the number of flaws in his book is enormous, but I'll focus on one thing. Wars, you remember, I spoke about alphas. Wars have an alpha close to one half. The lower the alpha, the fatter the tail. Pandemics, also about one half. And when I wrote The Black Swan, that's what shocked me, wars and pandemics, they have the thickest tails and it was you know uh not until quite a bit later that we did work on wars and pandemics in a more formal way so to give you the intuition of why uh, what what error uh, by pinker i'm going to focus on which is the one the most offensive i find scientifically which is to derive general properties off of a small sample because you have sampling error so the whole idea about science is avoiding noise sampling error and, and and not being fooled by randomness so i will um and i'll show you what 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 in fact has happened here okay when we read the data we know that we did the following uh, and actually the paper is in my book okay or a version of the paper is in my book um you have you take into arrival time you take an event say an event <sighs> x higher than okay uh, you take an event say x higher than 50 million in today's population the equivalent of 50, more than 50 million have died in that uh, event we call um, a conflict, a single conflict, not a series of conflicts, cumulatively killing more than 50 million. And mean time for it to happen throughout history. And effectively, for X higher than 50 million, the mean time is something like uh, 80 years. Okay, so if it takes 80 years on average for such an event to happen, how can you make claims seven years later that, you know, the world is a better place, we haven't had such a war? You need to wait. Let's assume in standard deviation. Actually, this is Gaussian. The arrival time between events is Gaussian. This is time. You have wars. You put a bench 50 million. How many times you exceeded? The arrival time is Gaussian and memoryless, and not Gaussian, sort of like uh, thin tailed but memoryless. Anyway, so you have to wait three times that to start making a statistically significant claim. This is not science. So, another problem with historians, uh, with data coming from history, particularly when you go back 2000, more than 2000 years, is that historians are not very rigorous scientists. <laughs> They just cite other people and give you a number. So how can we have a uh, statistical inference that takes into account the fact that historians are literally bullshitters? It's as follows. We take every conflict. You have, this is uh, time. You have a conflict. You, have, you take two numbers, low and high, because visibly Let's say take the recent uh, recent events, the Algerian War. You have low number, what the French think, 
and high number what Algerians uh, claim. And of course you have inflation over time. The French think 300,000 say were killed by the event and the Algerians saw that a million were killed. And of course you have inflation. Like the Hama massacre in uh, Syria had an inflation. <laughs> Started at 2,000 and reached 40,000 with no information. Just like you relay the event, the number gets bigger. So this phenomenon. So how can we know <laughs> if something was reliable in the past? Well, so with this, what we do did is built hundreds of over 500 events, a little more than 500 events. You can build 100k histories. You build 100,000 histories, where you take this high, that low, that low, high, low. So you build your histories. And, and from there, you test your hypothesis. And sure enough, practically all sample paths throughout history, all sample paths had a uh, alpha below one, all. Second problem is, of course, you know, a variable, a random variable for them to be power law, they should reach infinity. We did a trick because you have a finite number of people on the planet to transform 100% of the population being killed into something equivalent to infinity. And that transformation doesn't change the numbers for what we saw, but just allows us to do power law because it changes the numbers, say, if you have more than 8 billion people dying or more than 7 billion, yeah, you see a difference in numbers. So it is uh, the, what we call a log transformation. And, and that allows us to use power laws quite effectively in doing the inference. So now I answered the question about wars. Let me talk about pandemics, same methods we use for pandemics. We catalog practically all pandemics recorded and figure that there's a power law. And then of course you bootstrap, you jackknife, you remove some observation, add a, you know, whatever you do, you get the same result. Uh, both have an alpha below one. So both represent existential risks for us. And they're both very dangerous. So, I've answered uh, the first question about war and pandemics. Second point, someone was saying, well, what do you mean by infinite? Uh, very, I never observe infinite uh, mean. You never have finite, infinite observation. It's always finite. Let me clean this. Infinite mean means that you run your, uh, your, your data and every run will provide you with a different mean <laughs> and they're all going to be high. You don't know what the upper bound is. So that's one, one way to view it. Another one is by building sums. I have numbers going from x1 to whatever, x, n, and n. You know, you can make that as large as you want. And I take sn, sigma xi, 1 over n, so the average. And you start here. If the thing converges, it'd be volatile, and then it reaches a line. If your mean is undefined, it'd be all over the map. Typically, the terminology is as follows, where you say undefined or infinite. If the metric you're looking for, say the mean, is between zero and infinity, you call it infinite. If it's between minus infinity and plus infinity, you call it undefined, because it could be plus infinity or minus infinity, or anywhere in between. So power laws that one-tailed have an alpha here, but not here. Okay, this is sort of like skewed left-right distribution. You can have distribution like that, or you can have distribution with both tails. This is a tail, this is that the tail. For most variables we're concerned with, we have one tail, like wars, one tail. Uh, pandemics, one tail. Uh, you don't worry about negative things. In finance, when we talk about returns, log returns can be negative infinity plus infinity. Something going to zero is negative infinity in log returns. <laughs> sort of the same game we played with, uh, with uh, pandemics. <laughs> so you have a left tail and you have a right tail. Uh, 
where where do power laws come from uh, when we do entropy we're going to look at a minimum uh, sorry a maximum entropy distribution and and we'll we'll have a more formal understanding of it and that it's a constraints that make things a gaussian not uh, it's like like we start with a gaussian things become power law no you, you, if you put constraints of energy on anything you have a finite variance and that sort of like allows you to use the uh, central limit because you're bounded in the variance but but let me uh, give you a story of how things become power law and and also why they don't stay there the literature has what's called the matthew effects where the rich get richer or something called preferential attachment and the thought experiment is as follows uh, you have n people with one over n allocation of store storefront okay you have a storefront each one there they all have equal storefront that's day zero day one you have customers visiting these people randomly make them uniform so and uh, let's name them x1 so x3 x1 x so x3 has more visitors than the others he's going to have a larger storefront so this is day zero if on day one you now reallocate storefronts because x3 has made some money so she or he will you know expand <laughs> so when you expand your probability of getting visitors is no longer one over n it's going to be whatever you're you're higher than one over n and the other would have lower probability than one over n and 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 okay, over time the big will get bigger because you have a higher probability of making money until the thing collapses that's sort of the story and another way to view it in uh, say in social uh, contagion effects is that so i go to a store and i see uh a friend buying a book okay that person may have randomly bought this book so i go buy the book <laughs> all right now a third person will see two people walking around with the same book hey, what's going on i'll buy this book and then sure enough it causes a snowball effect and you'll have a power law i personally don't like these representation i think that the world is naturally power law distributed except when you have constraints constraints of growth constraints of uh, um, uh, energy constraints of uh, limitations that you have like for example a price and a market doesn't have constraints well the gdp is very far away so therefore it can follow a power law however height there are energy constraints or the height constraints or biological constraints that makes a human not follow power law and the distribution of height although between species we tend to have power law like think of a mouse versus an elephant so thank you i'll answer more questions later i just wanted to keep this short have a great day bye now